So call to order. Good evening, everybody. This is a special town council meeting, Thursday, March 14th, the special meeting at 4.30. So calling it to order. The first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So with that, roll call. Yes. Uh, Councilor Johnson. Present. Councilor Foley. Here. Councilor Katarina. Here. Councilor Donovan. Here. Councilor Hamill. Here. Uh, Chair Hayes, excuse me. <laughs> Here. And we understand Sean is caught up in session. Yes. This evening and will join us when he can. Yes. Is that That's okay. the plan. So the first item on the agenda tonight is order number 19016. Act, Act on the request from Councilor Catalina to give testimony to the legislature on behalf of the town council relating to the funding of municipal revenue sharing. Um, and with that, um, I know Tom and Jean Recanary may have some introductory comments to share with us, just some history and kind of get right. us up to speed on what it is and where we are yeah. and what you'd like to do. Do you want me to start? Just to yeah, why don't you okay. start with the history of municipal Great. revenue sharing because it goes back a ways. Yeah, this law was first passed in 1972, and its express purpose, uh, and through today, the same purpose, it's really to reduce municipal tax burden. That's it. That was its original purpose. It is uh, based on 5% of all state sales and income tax. And so um, because those numbers do fluctuate, the income and, and sales receipts year over year, uh, it, it's a straight percentage of whatever those receipts are. So uh, recessionary years, you'll see some blip in that and so on and so forth. Uh, and really for the first 34 years of existence, uh, it remained in intact at 5%. Uh, there was one year, 92, 93, which I think was a recessionary was a year where there was some modification done, I'll say. But then it returned back to the 5% until 2006. And I believe this is under the Baldacci administration. Uh, there were a number of changes. I don't remember exactly what they were, but for the period from 06 to 2015, uh, the total amount that was reduced that should have been sent to the municipal level was about $320 million. And then in 2016, there was uh, quite a precipitous drop under Governor LePage. <laughs> it went from 5% to 2%, and it's remained at that level uh, ever since. Um, the proposal in front of us now under Governor Mills is to move it from 2% to 2.5% in the next fiscal year. And the second year, the biennium, is to move it to 3%. Uh, and I did provide a little, quick little handout just showing kind of the history of receipts for, uh, for Scarborough. You can see what's happened over time. Um, if we were funded at the full 5%, it would be just over $2 million. So we could cut that in half. Just over a million dollars is what I have projected in the budget for receipt. Uh, Obviously, that's still subject to committee and legislative approval, mm -hmm. uh, but I feel fairly comfortable that that's a, a reasonable starting point, at least for budget purposes. What would it be if we straight line from the last fiscal year instead of restoring to 5%? Um, that's a good question. It's uh, in the order of 800,000. I can be more exact. Obviously. So it'd be roughly consistent with the last couple of years. Yeah, in fact, you can see it right there, 876. Yeah, 876. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that's kind of a quick history, if you will. Uh, I will say I, I also unearthed, and I was uh, brought back some memories about the matter, but <laughs> back in 2014, Governor LePage had actually had proposed to eliminate it altogether. And so uh, the full council at the time passed this resolution, 1401, um, that really spoke loudly about uh, uh, the feeling of the council at the time, and this was submitted and offered as part of testimony through that process. Mm -hmm. um, through the years, there have been some level of councilors uh, being authorized to speak on behalf of the council, but it's been really been sporadic. I don't recall that being a, a very common occurrence. Um, I think Councilor Chiazza was, was the most recent, and even in that event, he was speaking as an indiv individual as opposed to on behalf of the council. Do you remember when that was, Tom? I believe that was two, two years, years ago, ago, and I think it was on uh, uh, school funding, as I recall. I don't. It was a bill that Amy Volk had put in. Uh, I wasn't on the council at the time, but he uh, spoke in favor of it. Remember it was? 
Yes, I beg your pardon. I don't remember the policy yeah, matter okay. at hand, but I think learning from that experience, Councillor Caterina has come to you saying, I've been asked to do this, I'd like to do it, uh, here's what I'd like to say, and I'd love to do it with your blessing. And so that was, that's really the backdrop uh, to the matter. Yeah, and um, thank you. I gave you also my testimony from 2014, uh, just so you had some. And it's, it's pretty interesting. It's a lot of the same characters on the Appropriations Committee today that were there then. Uh, one of the reasons Maine Municipal, Maine Municipal has put out a call for all towns and municipalities to get behind opposing, so to speak, um, this going up to just 2.5%. Ideally, as you know, Maine Municipal would like to see the full 5%. Chances of us getting that are zero to none. I can tell you that right now from what I understand what's going on politically. But that being said, you, you know, you want to go up there and state very strongly, you know, as a municipality, you know, we've since, this has been cut since 2006, 2014, we almost lost it totally. It's the, uh, there's a, a real, should be a synergy between the state and the municipalities, which has been, uh, going on since Governor Curtis in 1972. That's when they started the income tax, by the way. That's what it was. And, you know, we're doing an income tax, and so we're going to make sure we give you guys, municipalities, something to help you with property tax. Um, and so that's, that's the background of it. Um, I, you know, I can deliver it as, you know, I would prefer to deliver it as in my capacity as a town council representing the council as a whole. Um, but I do plan to deliver it even, you know, it's me. I am a town councilor at Scarborough, um, so either way. Um, so I did want to give you the opportunity to let me know how you preferred that I deliver this particular testimony. Um, and that's why I'm here before you today. And oh, and I meant to mention, Karen also sent an email that I think, I hope you saw. That just talks about. Um, let's see. Was that today? Yeah, and I'll re I'll read you the part that really makes sense. We contributed to the state, we being Scarborough, thirty five point six million dollars in sales tax. That was in two thousand seventeen. Um, she didn't. She couldn't find the two thousand eighteen right away. Um, that's two. Uh, excuse me. Six hundred three point seven million dollar in taxable sales. Uh, includes restaurants and lodging, and that doesn't even include income tax. I don't know about you guys, but I pay a lot of income tax to the state, hmm. and I would like to see some of it come back because, you know, as I, I feel very strongly that we, need, we must stabilize our property taxes. Um, we need to stop this ongoing, you know, I, I feel that a lot of what happens with the school budget it becomes a proxy for people's, you know, discontent with their taxes as a whole. Um, and that, to me, it's, it, you know, you got to draw a line in the sand, so to speak. Otherwise, the legislature will just do whatever they want to do. So maybe municipal would like to see us put a little pressure on them. So that's where I'm coming from. So time is a procedural piece. Uh, a motion for... For this. Yeah, we did have a motion prepared. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the decision is uh, whether you want to put the weight of the council behind the testimony, or uh, or that I just deliver it as me. Yeah, right. I think that's the decision point before you. So you want? I'll go ahead and make a motion that um, we have a discussion around whether we feel that <coughs> Council Caterina should go home, or which way she should, which direction she should take in making that testimony. Second. Anybody second it? Okay. Is uh, do you have the language that was drafted here, Tom? The motion? Yeah. Oh. So the motion that was the order that's before us. You didn't make that. You didn't make that order, did you? No, I thought we needed a motion on the floor just to get the conversation right. going. No. No, you make a motion on this. You make a motion on this. And then you discuss. Okay. So, so the motion of the floor is after on the request from Councilor Caterina to give testimony to the legislature on behalf of the town council related to the funding of the municipal revenue sharing. So that's the motion. So does anybody so move that? Anybody second? Second. All those in favor? Second. Okay. So discussion. 
Um, anybody want to have any comments? Uh, Council Doyle. I don't think there's any uh, question amongst the six of us that we would support um, municipal revenue sharing because it makes the property tax burden, which is not a, a necessarily progressive tax, uh, less burdensome on uh, our taxpayers. And so using revenue that goes from income tax paid by the citizens of Maine to Augusta and then comes back to the communities makes sense to me. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, I read the drafts uh, and uh, I didn't have any trouble with the one that is proposed to be presented uh, at this time. Uh, if others have a problem with tone, I figure they can work that out with Jean Murray because I su suspect Jean Murray would be happy to uh, make sure that the tone is appropriate for uh, a collective support of this. <clears throat> Councilor Fuller? Um, yeah, I agree with a lot of what Councilor Donovan uh, said. And for me, um, so for me, there's kind of two things that I want to make sure that we're clear to split at this time because I think we missed an opportunity to get clarity uh, a couple years ago. So even back then, as I recall, I 100% supported the issue that Councilor Chiazza wanted to testify on behalf of what I was uncomfortable was that we didn't necessarily, as a council, have a rule or policy in place or, or a process to follow. So for me, if, if we were to have unanimous support um, today for Jean Marie's testimony on behalf of the whole council, I would support that. Um, but I would also ask that we, uh, as a council, send this question of whether or not folks, councilors going up sh to testify um, you know, let's create a policy around it so that it's really easy and clear. Because uh, I think what happened is then the rules of policy didn't meet at all last year. So it kind of got, and honestly, I, I knew this was one of the things I wanted to talk about this year, and then it wasn't on my radar until, it's one of those things that's not on your radar until it is. So uh, I would. Good suggestion. Yeah, and I, um, and I do apologize to you, Marie, for earlier. I, I think I had read your previous testimony. Oh. <laughs> That one was pretty. I found a little harsh. <laughs> if I'm being, if I'm critiquing you honestly, I'm, I'm, it was. Um, I did the same thing. Okay, so and I went whoa. This one is a much softer version of that, and I think yeah. what I've learned in the, my time, you know, on the council is that um, tone matters, and and that's how you you know get things done. So there's a couple of things I think you could even soften up further in the fourth paragraph, but I can talk with you about that yeah. offline, and it's not a big deal to me. Um, but that's kind of where I am at. So. If I, as long as I have support from the six of you to then move this conversation to the Rules and Policy mm -hmm. Committee to formalize it, um, you know, obviously I, I do think the, the, it's, a, it's a good ask. If we had unanimous support. If we didn't, then I would ask that you'd go up and just represent yourself and still punch this topic to Rules and Policy um, so that the next time it's really clear what it takes to have that kind of support. I'd like to follow up on that uh, with a slightly different view. I mean, I did have a couple questions, so my, my uh, comments are going to go along in a couple sections. But um, you mentioned when we did this last time, there was a resolution. There was a unanimous resolution yeah. by the council. So I'm not sure we're at that point. I mean, I think Katie, Katie touched on that. Um, but the second thing is that I'm a little puzzled by the fact that the governor is re governor's recommending 2 to 2.5%, two and, and you you are seeking five percent, so I'm I'm wondering a little bit about how you know what the rationale is for that, and then how we would follow on supporting that. I can, I can answer that. Um, the rationale is it's got to do obviously with the politics of it. I, I sincerely doubt we're going to get five percent, but if you don't get up there and remind them, and I hate to say us and them but them of the background and the effect this has had on municipalities over time, um, you, you may not get anything. And they may not even go for Janet's, uh, excuse me, the governor's, okay. you know, going to 2.5. It's just, and, and, and remember that I'm coming at this from being um, on the Legislative Policy Committee of Maine Municipal. 
uh, so there are a number of towns and, and cities and small plantations and whatever who will be coming up to speak on this also. So it's just part of the bigger picture. Great. So thank you for that. And it's really helpful to understand that. What I would say is that I, I, I'm not sure that we have a unanimous support for for either the amount or the measure itself. So I though I wouldn't be opposed to Jean Marie going forward and speaking. You know, that's a big part of her role and I hope she represents us well on the legislative policy committee. Um, but I would prefer that that be, uh, you know, uh, on her her behalf as an individual. But happy that she mentioned she's a town councilor. But that's how I I would approach it. Want to go first? Do you want to respond? Yeah. yeah. And, and and I understand you saying that, but it doesn't give as much weight. Just so you'll know, it's better weight to say, look, I'm coming up. I'm representing the town of Scarborough because we'd really like to see municipal. Revenue share and risk of the word. I understand that. So, yeah. just so you want. So, I think this is awkward because if I knew it was unanimous, I would vote yes. And if one person, was, if I knew one person was voting no, I'm against it simply because to me, this is an all or nothing vote, which makes this awkward for me. So, if this went six to one, I don't know if, if I'm comfortable with Jean Marie up there saying, I represent the council. She represents the majority of the council. So this is a very awkward situation for me as far as the vote is concerned. Um, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, Jean Marie, you're saying no right now because two and a half percent is not enough. Exa well, the increase to two and a half percent. Well, it's not me personally. Right, right. It's the municipalities of the state Correct. of Maine Could, feel that two and a half percent is not enough. We've, yep. bear, we've borne the burden long enough. Yeah, yeah. And it's time to start. Right. Really and this is a tactic to say, hey. Yeah, it's a tactic. Yeah, ab absolutely. It's okay. a political tactic. And, and the plan is for next year, so fiscal year 20, for it to be 5%. We'd like to have it 5% now. Now, right. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you that there are four bills anyway, maybe five in there. I'm not sure what they've, what's happened to them. And they're everywhere from from uh, restore <clears throat> revenue sharing back to 2006, which is like, yeah, that's not going right, to right, That's like, right. I got a lot of money. Um, to leave it alone, we're good at two. Yeah. So there's all sorts of iterations okay. in between. What I'm speaking to specifically, this opportunity is the appropriations and taxation committees are meeting together. Yeah. So I'd be speaking to two committees at once. Um, and it has to do with the governor's budget specifically. Mm -hmm. That the governor is saying, oh, well, yeah, okay, um, I'm gonna give this and this and this. Well, all right, I, I'll give the municipalities half a percent. Right. right. So it's like, okay. oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. I think I am right now. I'll go ahead. I'll, yeah. He just wants to hear what I have to say so he can read by it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, and, and you know, just to be clear, I, I, I'm kind of in that, and that's why I wish we hadn't forgotten about this issue a c couple years ago, because we could have a very clear policy that would say it has to be unanimous, or just a majority 4-3 vote could mm -hmm. set, let, allow someone to do that as well, and I think that's why it would be a great discussion for rules and policy to have. Um, but I also, at this point, if we're not unanimous, I don't know that I'm, I mean, even though I personally support it, I don't know that I'm comfortable saying, you know, yes, go up there if it's not unanimous, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, just a rebut, no. <laughs> um, I, I, I would be disappointed if we didn't have a majority that wanted me to do this, for me not to be able to go up there because we don't have a policy. That being said, yeah, I think we do need to work on something, perhaps on rules and policies. So that's... John. What I think Jean Marie was just saying was she really would have two choices. If, if a majority of people said that they support this presentation that she uh, has drafted, then she would say so. And if, uh, if it was unanimous, she'd say so. Uh, and uh, Council Foley has made a good point that we haven't had a serious discussion about should these sorts of testimony pieces be unanimous or mm -hmm. should it just be a majority? 
And I hadn't really given that a lot of thought, but I think the Rules Committee quite appropriately should protect that. Uh, for the circumstances at hand, if you support this, I think you just raise your hand as a yes, and if you don't, uh, you don't support the mm -hmm. statement as, as it's written, or as Jean Marie would be willing to amend it to change any elements of tone or language that you think, then you vote against it, and we probably go from there. Okay, <laughs> Council Johnson, he was a little quicker. <laughs> I think, in general, I, I think I'm just uncomfortable with the dynamic of what's happening. I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not informed enough to speak to what Jean Marie is speaking on. I'm, and I'm uncomfortable with what we're doing, trying to represent the entire town council at the state level. And I don't want to wordsmith what Jean Marie says. I think Jean Marie unleashed is probably more effective than <laughs> Jean Marie wordsmith to death. Um, so for that reason, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this. And if you stood up and you could put my name on it, so to speak, I every, everything I read, even, even your one that had a little less kind tone, I don't disagree with much of what you said. I am just uncomfortable with the, the framework in which we're working right now. So I'm, I'm going to vote against it simply because of that. So. <laughs> and I would make the, uh, I would, Paul, do your Yeah. <laughs> I would make the argument back that, um, I see this as, do you believe in municipal revenue sharing or don't you? And do you believe in stabilizing our community's <clears throat> property taxes? Mm -hmm. Because the passage of anything more that we can get out of the legislature will be very helpful to the people in the town of Scarborough. So I would like all of you to remember to frame it in that way, that we're, it's not an R thing, it's not a D thing, it's not an I thing, it's not a oh, G no, thing. You know, it's a, uh, do we want the legislature to give us back our money? <laughs> um, one question I would have for the two folks who are more, sounds like Paul, Councilor Johnson's more uh, concerned about process pieces and the framework and uh, Councilor Hamill may have more detail concerns. So is there any... Thing that you could see that would change if it said two and a half percent instead of five percent, for example, would that be something that you would then be able to feel more comfortable getting behind? And would Jean Marie still want to present it that way? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Those are just questions. They're Fair not question. answers. They're just Fair um, question. But um, um, because I may have uh, spoke more loudly on uh, you know the the detail issues, I have similar discomfort around the process, and I was trying to make two moves in one decision. So, I mean, if, if I think this would benefit from more discussion if we're going to try to develop a resolution or try to develop some rules around uh, how we would like to authorize counselors to speak on various and sundry topics at the state level. You know, I'd be willing to participate in that, but I, I'm not ready either in terms of the substantive um, ask here or the process. So I guess with that, I've been kind of quiet. Uh, I'm kind of in a similar place that I think when we had this conversation with Councilor Chiazzo that we, we kind of talked about that, that if it's going to be for the council, it really should be sort of a unanimous view mm -hmm. because they're speaking for everybody there. Unfortunately, tonight, Sean's not here, so one counselor is missing. Um, I have, there is, there for me, um, I, I absolutely agree with what you have, I would like to see some of the words softened a little bit, especially things around, you know, us subsidizing less fortunate. So I think, but I think as a, as a process, I would rather us have this go to policy, get, so get real clear about when can we speak as individuals and as council members and when can we speak for the whole council. So I think at this point, I think Councilor Donovan made a great you know, suggestion about let's let's take a show of hand who's in favor for Jean Marie, Jean Marie going up and speaking on behalf of the whole council, and then well, if if that isn't the majority view, then Jean Marie can go up and speak for on, on as a town council member, but give her testimony. So I guess with that, those in favor of Jean Marie going up, are you in favor or are you? Is that oh, no, for a she's going to move the question. Time for, yeah, no, she's going to move the question. She's, okay. Yeah, yeah. she's <laughs> like, we're voting on the motion on the table. You're not yes. just asking, taking a straw poll right now. 
Yes, no, we're voting I on make, the Yeah, I just okay. want to make sure yeah. we're yeah. moving That's the question. That's what I was yeah. making clear. I did to. have one more comment. You can. Uh, I moved the question. <laughs> That's true. Procedurally, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And that's time. true. All procedure. <laughs> uh, uh, Katie made a good point that that the uh, what what may be uh, uh, a sticking point in terms of the content was the five percent reference because I think what we all agree on is it's it's impractical to, to think in terms of five percent, but nevertheless we all endorse uh, a steady increase in a responsible way to get back to 5%. Uh, and, I, and that's why I said at the outset that changing some of the language uh, would probably make me more comfortable with it. So I guess I'm saying uh, uh, I would vote yes with the understanding that I'd like to be able to have that opportunity to at least talk with you about, because mm -hmm. I thought that Katie's point was right. That was one of the sticking points was it says, Back to five percent, and that that may may be problematic. So, so I guess I guess Council Foley. <laughs> so I'm just doing some simple math here, and I can read the tea leaves. And I, I mean, I'm, we're going to end up, I think, in a stalemate, uh, depending, or we'll ha or it's going to be four two. <laughs> so I don't know that. Again, I you know my feeling is, in order to move forward. Um, it really should be unanimous, um, and I don't think we're going to get there. But I think should, the, the question's on the floor, so we should just vote and yeah, move and forward. And, and that yeah. then raises the Because if it's 3-3, three, three, it whether, fails, correct. If it's not going to be unanimous, which it appears not to right. be, would you, Jamie, rather be able to go up and speak without a vote being taken, <laughs> or would you rather have the vote taken? That's a good That's a, yes, good question. Correct. That's yeah. a really great See, this question, is a good too. discussion. We yeah. advanced... Right the whole way in which we handle these matters in the future. Right. But it would be my thought that uh, the motion should be withdrawn and allow Jean Marie to go up and uh, speak on her own behalf. Right, and then I and then I would not, I'm sorry, I'm jumping in here because you call it. He can't and then I wouldn't anymore. say I'm representing the town council well, in my official that. capacity, but I could say I'm a town councilor. Yeah, right. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> yeah. yes. only one raised my hand around here. Uh, <laughs> To that point, if we withdrew, if we withdrew this, I would gladly put my personal name on it. So I'm Jean Marie. I'm speaking. I have Paul Johnson, town councilor, behind me. That would be a good workaround in this specific case. She, I mean, maybe she doesn't want to waste her time listing five people, and I can respect that as well. Uh, well, I mean, we I only have, have three. three that's my no, no. That was ex no. That's exactly my point. I mean, if you don't want to waste your three minutes, but I would wholeheartedly. I think Bill's conclusion is probably the smartest one. If we withdrew this, okay. I'd have no problem approaching Jean Marie privately and say, "Hey, throw my name on there. I'm I'm there." So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I could support uh, withdrawing that. And what I'll do is I can just put in here. I'm here today as a town council for Scarborough, Maine, and leave it at that. Just leave it at that, period. And they can read what they want and do it. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that I know most of the members both, on both sides of the aisle on both of these committees, which is one reason. Maybe this was like, oh, Jean Marie, could you please go up and deliver something? Yeah. So, anyway. With your permission, I'll withdraw the motion. Yeah. Um, uh, some additional comment, point. if I may. I, I don't know if now that affects Bill's motion, but we're leaving work undone. Someone was talking about going back to rules and policy and developing. Yeah, that'll be a second. Oh, that'll be a second. After, right after this, I'll make a motion to do that. Okay. So I will second um, Bill's withdrawal. Thank you. So, so I'll yeah. take a vote. Yeah. And you take a vote. Um, withdraw. I think oh, right. for the, the process is that the seconder has to withdraw the second also, it was oh. Katie. which is Katie, and you yeah. had just that? did. Okay. So, so, she just, so there is no motion so on the table. Okay. You no. could now procedurally okay. make a motion on. The so I would like to make a motion that we uh, do send this topic of. Uh, legislative testimony to the next Rules and Policy Committee meeting, please. Second. I agree. Oops. I okay. think it's a good thing. To discussion. Any discussion? That's All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, that concludes that. Our next item is order number 19017, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I for consultation with legal counsel regarding the Piper Shores contract zone amendment. A um, little bit of 
discussion, Tom, we had talked about, just, just for the audience that may be listening, this is a follow-up to a workshop that we had where we had come up with consensus points of things that we thought were important to be part of the conversation. Piper Shores did respond, and the town manager, Katie Foley, and myself met with them on the 21st, and they did come back with a response to those, that, those items. That's what we're going to discuss in an executive session. Um, and after the conclusion of the executive session, there'll be some type of report out on, on some of the subject matter we had and, and sort of where we are. So with that, um, a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Are we we're coming back in here? here to yes. yes. Yeah, we'll yeah. be down around the table here. 